Minus seven integer bet is way worse than a minus six and a half, even though you don't lose on seven. Minus six and a half, 53, 47, you have an edge. At seven, you push four times. Now you go 49, 47, <laughs> four, you will lose long term. I'm just going to leave that there. You pick it up and make it sound smart and make it sound accessible for somebody like me. All right, a whole lot of math there. So. What, what I'm getting at is a lot of people say, and they do this with the NFL too, where they're like, oh, I missed the minus two and a half. I'll just lay three it, it, because it's not going to hurt me because if it lands on that number, I, it's true I don't win, but I get my money back. So it, so it doesn't cost me anything to make the bet. And the point I was making is, well, it does cost you in the long run. I used an example with the Knicks game because it was pl- applicable. Uh, by the way, I, I do like the Knicks game too. It falls into that trend we spoke about the last couple of weeks. Game one, home favorite, loses outright. I pretty much always bet that game two home favorite in that game. So what? how important is laying six and a half versus seven? I'll just throw out numbers here. Let's assume the minus six and a half is a slightly profitable bet, 53 and 47. You play it 100 times, you're going to win 53%. You're laying $1.10, you're going to win money, even paying the VIG. But about four times out of 100, it's going to land on the number. And when it lands on the number, you know what happens? Your 53 wins go down to 49 wins. Now you're going 49, 47, and four, laying seven. Guess what? You, um, it's true those four times when you, when you don't win, when it lands on seven, you don't lose, but you don't win enough times the other times to justify the VIG, and it winds up turning a positive expectation bet into a negative expectation bet. I, I agree with everything Steve said in terms of the mathematical aspect of it, where the impact is felt based on 100 bets. However, I would counter with a couple of things. First of all, for example, in this postseason in the NBA, out of 53 games played, including the play-in games, we've had 51 games where the number has not even come remotely into play. We've had two where Denver won by nine, the line was eight and a half. Brooklyn uh, won, I'm sorry, Philadelphia won by five over Brooklyn, line was four and a half. So I get your argument in, in that sense. However, I would counter it by saying, if you didn't bet those two games, it's not even material to you or germane to that situation. And, and I can appreciate it. But to me, in, in football, I think the, the value in that is far greater, exponentially greater. However, to me, in basketball, particularly college basketball, college football, Johnny Avella and I have talked about this. People get so concerned about the line moves in college football. But Patrick, when you look over the course of a weekend of a game, there's so many that miss by so many points. I think we're looking at it too much in a vacuum at one or two games. I'm thinking back. I've been in this town nine years. I can't even tell you how many. I, maybe I've had five pushes in nine years. Well, I've had like 50 pushes in like two years. Um, but I bet I'm a high volume player. I'm going to come over the top here, yeah. and I'm going to. Sure. I think this is going to prove my point. So the rest of the NBA playoffs, if I, I tell you what, I would like you to offer me 30 to one. That, that the game will land on the closest number. Okay, so in the Knicks game, it would be seven, okay? Would you give me 30 to one that the Knicks will win by exactly seven? I'm guessing no, correct? Correct. All right, so so you're just saying what's very, very unlikely, like less than, you, you, you're basically saying it's way less than 4%, but you don't really believe it because if you really believe it's only like 2%, you would give me 30 to one because it would be like a roulette wheel. You'd be like the house, you're paying 30 to one, with um, more than 36 numbers. No, I would give it to you if it were the course of a longer time, but when you look at the number of remaining games, I, I don't have enough games to be played. I'll, I'll, do, it, I'll do it at infinitesimal, at going forward on every every any game you want to play. You can, you can handpick them. I understand that, but what, what I'm saying to you is I think there's too much paralysis by overanalysis on numbers. People are so fearful of it. To me, if I'm betting a game and I'm going to flat-out fire on a game – if I'm that concerned on a college basketball game that the line went from three to three and a half, hell, I, or three and a half to four, I shouldn't be betting the game. See, and, and, and I'm, I'm completely the opposite. I can yeah, tell you all, all, all the time, New Jersey, I just talked about yeah. New Jersey's a huge bet, plus three and a half. At plus three, yeah, it's a pizza bet. It's like, it, it just makes, like, over the course of my betting career, I can tell you, and, and I encourage all the bettors to do this, especially high-volume bettors, if you add up all your bets and you take away one point from yeah. every bet that you made your entire betting lifetime, you're bankrupt. You're going to the dollar loan center. If you get an extra one point, just one point, on every single bet you've ever made, you are the world's greatest sports better. Your style and your hitting 55 percent see but here's where i counter that i think that's like if you're using every game across the board like perfect example we use the nba playoffs this year i give you one point on every game i can tell you right now you're not with the even 10 percent of the games right like the, the numbers have been so ridiculous in terms of how the games have played out well this i agree with because yeah. they, it's been so volatile that none of these numbers are hitting but th- and sorry, that's why ahead. that's why you pick the winner of the game yeah heck no. you just pick the winner of the game and yeah. and they cover right 
But there's two things I think that you have to take into consideration. Steve, from a mathematical standpoint, is in the top 1% of 1%, Patrick, right? He's, he's a genius. He understands black bat, jack, understands the math of it. I think when you're talking to the average consumer, that's probably not their area or their wheelhouse. So you're looking at it from a basic standpoint. The other thing is, I don't think as many people are probably playing as many games as you may be, so your sample size is much greater. For the average person who might be betting a game on a Monday night football, for example, and football is not the best in the NFL, because we know how tight the lines are. You have 32 teams. The numbers are extremely sharp. But overall, if you take a college basketball game in the Big 12, that's one of my favorite conferences to bet. KU at home at three and a half, it goes to four. I tell you right now, I'll bet that every day of my life, just based on what Bill Self and them have done during his 20 years there and how it plays out. I get Steve's point. And of course, it's like if you're buying a stock, you'd rather buy it at six than seven dollars a share. So I, I can appreciate where he's coming from. I just feel like times too many times people get scared off on certain bets but the sample size, you mentioned 4%. But how many of those out of those are you really hitting a push on one out of 25 bets? Yes. Yes. Okay. In, the long, yeah. in the long run. And, you know, the best evidence I can give, the sharpest book in the world's pinnacle, right? You yeah. can sell points. Okay. Sure. So, so if you felt like, oh, these aren't going to hit, you could just sell it. For, right. I believe they get for, you can sell for seven points, uh, seven cents, I'm guessing. So if you if you truly believe these that one point is, is so unlikely to hit, you could just sell and bet all your bets at plus money. I, I, don't, I don't refute anything in terms of what Steve is saying from a numerical standpoint. I just think, Patrick, we talked about this earlier where there's paralysis by overanalysis and there's a fear. So many times people will look at, and Steve has been doing this for a long time, so he's not as concerned. But I think, the again, the average consumer looks at it and goes, well, this number is this. It seems kind of fishy. Dustin made this comment last week. He goes, this game seems a little fishy. Like, to me, if you're making that comment, then they've already beaten you in the sense that they've intimidated your thought process. And there are no right answers. Let me emphasize that, no, that, no, that no. on I, any one game, on any one game, all this goes out the window because be, 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 because well, let's let's use an example. Will Levis in the draft, he was under four and a half at one point, like lay minus four hundred. Okay, so think about this: you had to bet four hundred to win a hundred if you wanted to bet that he'd go in the top four, and he didn't go in the first round. Right. I don't think line shopping mattered with Will yeah. Levis. Yeah, that, that's a little bit of it. But look, I'm not trying to suggest or imply what Steve is saying is incorrect. I, I think that, listen, everybody would rather have a six and a half than a seven. There's no question about it. But when you look at Connecticut and San Diego State, and it's not a good example I'm using because it's just one game. But again, did did you really feel like UConn was going to win the game by six points? All, all I'm saying is don't be fearful of it. But obviously you want to get the best of the number. I don't think anybody would argue that. I think it would be ridiculous to. I just feel like sometimes, though, there's like, well, this thing went from five and a half to six. I'm like, damn, if you're that concerned about it, then probably don't bet that game is my whole point, Patrick. You know, that's a really interesting um, issue. Like, you look at the line move in that Connecticut game. It's yeah. fascinating. So f some places opened as low as five. Minus five, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Boom. Some places open six. Immediately gets bet up to seven and a half. It stays there at seven and a half. And then it's, it's like you're saying, Amal, it's almost like it got to the point where, oh, when eights popped up, people were like, gimme, 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 you know, yeah. and, 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 they, and, and betters even you know, took plus seven and a half and it closed at seven. And if we get back on our time machine, well, wait a minute, Connecticut was just the greatest four seed we've ever seen. And they should have been laying nine and a half, right? Yeah, no, yeah. And I, I think, look, I think there's two different approaches. You know, a quick, give you a quick poker example. I think there's some times where you get odds that are not proper for making a call in a certain situation, but sometimes you look at the situation, you make a risk. But I, I thought the point that Steve made that's very important is in a one-off, in a one-game scenario, it's not a proper application. But what I do like that Steve does is he looks at it over the course of 100 or 1,000 games. So in that long haul, Patrick, I think it is going to pay tremendous dividends. I'm just saying that in certain situations, if you love a game, you absolutely going to unload the clip and reload, then don't be fearful of it. It's like, it's like that devil's game. I know Mike took a different approach than I did when it went from five and a half to six and a half. I'm like, I don't give a damn. If I get busted on this game, so be it. But I am going to live and die on certain games that I flat out love. Exceptions to the Healthy. rule. Po poker, one, one exception. You can draw to an inside straight. Like after the flop, it's fine. Like a guy bets small. You can do a crying call because if you if you hit that straight, it's so concealed. And then you're going to make like 20 times more. So yeah. you have the right implied odds to draw to a one in 13 chance. Healthy debate. Next week, Steve, let's talk about the exagger exaggeration in the industry of win percentage. Go to vsun.com slash subscribe to become a VEASAN Pro subscriber today.